Welcome. It's so good to be with you on this Wednesday as we get together for a little midweek Bible study and devotional time. And I'm so glad that you've chosen uh, to join us today to do just that. And I uh, hope you're having a great week so far. And it's always good to get together during the middle of the week to hopefully refresh us for the rest of the week. And again, so glad that you've taken the time out to join us today, whether that's Wednesday or whatever it is that you're, maybe it's the end of the week and you're listening to it. I hope you had a full week uh, by that time. But wherever you are and and uh, whenever you are, you're, you, that whenever it is that you're watching this, I hope that you are uh, doing well. And again, so glad that you've chosen to join us. You can probably remember being in school and realizing that there are certain people next to whom no one really wanted to sit during lunch or play with during recess. All the way back in um, you know elementary school, it starts young. That uh, just seemed like some people maybe were were left out. And even today, there may be certain people that many folks just don't really want to be seen with or or spend time with and uh, maybe look at in a different way or uh, don't really want to make the effort to, to be around them. And yet, you know, when you read through the Bible and you see God's vision for what the kingdom of God is meant to be about, uh, Jesus calls us as his people to operate on exactly the opposite standard that so often the world operates on. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, in, in talking about the body of Christ specifically, the church, uh, here's what the Apostle Paul writes. He says, there are many parts, but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I, I don't need you. The f- head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some of the parts, Paul says, that the body of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. And so we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen, while the more honorable parts do not require this special care. And so God has put the body together such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have maybe less dignity, as we might put it. This makes for harmony among all members, so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. All of you together are Christ's body, and each of you is a part of it. In essence, Paul is saying that not only should we be willing to associate with and and welcome anyone, but we actually should be willing to give extra attention to those who need it the most. And certainly that takes place within the church, it ought to, but it also ought to take place for those inside the church dealing with those who are not believers and those that we see and come in contact with on a regular basis. And really, isn't that a beautiful picture of God's love and grace? In fact, isn't that what God did with us? We're told by James, the brother of Jesus, not to practice favoritism and welcoming people into our church assemblies, but to value and welcome everybody with love and grace. He says this in James chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, My dear brothers and sisters, how can you claim to have faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others? For example, suppose someone comes into your meeting dressed in fancy clothes and expensive jewelry, and another comes in who is poor and, and dressed in dirty clothes. If you give special attention and a good seat to the rich person, but say to the poor one, you stand over there or or sit on the floor. Well, doesn't this discrimination show that your judgments are guided by evil motives? That's what James says. And he goes on to say, listen to me, dear brothers and sisters. Hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? And aren't they the ones who will inherit the kingdom he promised to those who love him? And the Apostle Paul writes this in Romans chapter 3, verses 22 through 23. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I I love this verse. There is no difference, Paul says. We've all sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God. There's no difference. None of us is better than the other because we are all sinners saved by grace. Or we are a sinner not yet saved by grace. And Jesus was an incredible example for us of this. He spent time with tax collectors and sinners and common people and diseased people and prostitutes, as well as religious leaders and teachers and disciples and believers. And so when we see someone excluded, shunned, or left out, let's go out of our way to befriend that person and to display them to them the unconditional love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's show them abundant honor. After all, they are of eternal value to God. So they ought to be equally loved and valued by us. Hope you have a blessed day. God bless.